I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial, no hate can keep me down No matter what my haters say I proudly rep both of my races today I'm biracial and I'm proud I'm biracial and I proclaim it loud I'm biracial and no hate can Salam wa alaikum YouTube was cracking it's your angry biracial back with another crime reaction video. Y'all know how I do. I gotta keep my foot on the necks of these modern males 24-7. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and let's dive right in. Try to save his girlfriend from being stabbed to death, but sadly, Shante Crawford did not survive the attack. Loved ones just gave us this photo of her. Thank you for being here with us at 11 o'clock. I'm Lorenzo Hall. I'm Leslie Foster, and tonight we're learning more about this stabbing inside an Arlington apartment. Police say the accused killer is in custody. The victim's family tells us that suspect is her ex-boyfriend. Hey, Matthew Torres is live outside of the apartment on Washington Boulevard. And Matthew, tonight you also learned this woman was pregnant, right? Lorenzo, making this story even more heartbreaking, we are learning that information from the victim's new boyfriend who was inside the apartment when she was stabbed. Family and friends say the victim and the suspect were sharing the same apartment even though they were no longer together. And according to relatives, this victim, who, is, who was a mom, was suffering years of abuse by the suspect. Like every time I go to sleep or close my eyes, all I see is just her and everything that happened. It's not just the haunting memories. Scratches and bloody marks around his fingers serve as a painful reminder for Michael Webb. He says he tried to protect his girlfriend, 37-year-old Shantae Crawford, from her ex-boyfriend Monday morning. He had her pinned on the floor between the bed and the wall. There was blood on the wall and her throat was severely damaged by, uh, I believe, a kitchen knife. Arlington County police say 35-year-old Alimami Forna stabbed Crawford inside the apartment they still shared after getting into an argument. Webb, who was visiting, burst through the door when the commotion intensified. I hit him um, here, and he fell. So I grabbed her, pulled her up, and we started trying to make ourselves down and get away from him. We counted him again. I hit him about five times. Webb says the suspect was jealous of her. According to family, Crawford and her ex were together for more than a decade. They say there was a history of domestic violence calls. You pray that it doesn't happen. Like, right. You know, you know, like you feel like it, but you just pray that it never gets... You know, to that Family feared this would happen, accusing Forna of being physically, mentally, and emotionally abusive. He isolated her from us a lot. Just a month ago, he put her in the hospital. It's 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 constant. Loved ones described the victim as a great mother who always put others before her. She leaves behind a 15-year-old son with autism. I lost my child today. And another one on the way. Because uh, she was pregnant, three weeks pregnant with my child. And tonight, that suspect is now in jail, facing a murder charge, making this the second homicide in Arlington County so far this year. The family, just a few hours ago, has set a GoFundMe page to help raise money for funeral expenses. To learn more, we'll have that link under this story on WUSA9.com. We're live in Arlington tonight. That was hard to watch. That modern male had been abusing that woman for over a decade. Months before he delivered. He had put her in the hospital. There is no protection for women, even more so black women. She had tried to move on, to start a life with someone else, and her greasy piece of shit ex couldn't handle it. The same man that's been abusing her for 10 years didn't want to give her up. He wanted her to continue to be his punching bag. It's all about power and control with these kingdomless kings. They want to be the master of the new slave plantation. And when they can't get that power and control over you, or when they lose it, they become violent and deadly. He took that poor woman away from her son, from the new man in her life that loved her and defended her, and deleted the new baby that was growing inside of her. If that story wasn't bad enough, Listen to this one. Family and friends are going to gather to remember the 23-year-old woman, a young mother 
who was killed in the shooting. It happened at a home off 22nd Avenue Southwest and Trotter Road in unincorporated Largo at around 145 Saturday afternoon. 10 Tampa Bay's Angelina Salcedo is live at the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. And Angie, you spoke to family not long ago. Yeah, it has been a very tough Christmas Eve and Christmas for this family now grieving the loss of this 23-year-old mother of two who deputies say was shot and killed by her own 14-year-old brother. I want you to take a look at who we're talking about here. This is Abrielle Baldwin and her two sons. You can see them in the photo there. Six-year-old Jamari and Amir, who is just 11 months old. Her sister gave me this photo after we spoke moments ago. She says their family is heartbroken about her loss in this entire situation as they plan her funeral right before the new year. Now, Brie was killed Christmas Eve in a shooting here at her grandmother's home in Largo after deputies say a fight broke out between her 14 and 15-year-old brothers earlier in the day. Investigators say that fight was reportedly over how many Christmas gifts each brother was getting while the family was shopping. She's just a woman going about life, doing her thing uh, with her two kids, trying to make a living, trying to make it, and... You know, her, her brother <laughs> killed her. <laughs> uh, and why did her brother kill her? Because what she said was, knock it off. Leave it alone. Why are you doing this? It's Christmas. Why are you getting all upset? So he goes over and puts a bullet in her, tears up her insides, and kills her. Leaves her dead in the driveway. Now, we are not naming the teen brothers in this case because of their ages. The 14-year-old is the one who the sheriff says killed his sister. After that shooting, his 15-year-old brother came out and shot the 14-year-old, saying, you shot my sister. Sheriff Gualtieri says surveillance video shows the shootings were only eight seconds apart. Now, the 14-year-old is in the hospital after undergoing surgery, but will be taken into custody after he recovers. He's charged with first-degree murder, child abuse, and delinquent in possession of a firearm. The 15-year-old is in a mental health facility getting treatment after threatening to take his own life. He's charged with attempted first-degree murder and tampering with physical evidence after throwing the gun he used into a nearby yard. Now, Bree's family says that they have been trying to see the both of them, but the hospital won't let them into the hospital to go and see the 14-year-old. Tonight, they tell me they just want him to know they don't think he's a bad person. They just want him to get the help that he needs. As this investigation continues, deputies are going to work to find one of the firearms that they have not recovered and figure out if both of them have been stolen and possibly used in other crimes in our area. We're live tonight in Largo. There is something wrong in the culture of modern males and even more so in the culture of certain groups of modern males. And this culture that these young males tried to emulate, this thug culture with their pants sagging and they're walking around with weapons. That culture, that fucked up mindset was passed on to them from the kings they grew up around, from the music they listened to in that fucked up culture, from what they see every single day with men who look like them. Kang culture is the problem. He unalived his sister, his older sister who was a mom of two herself, who told him to knock it off, stop with the fighting. Let's enjoy this holiday together. And his fragile ego, already fragile and brittle at 14, couldn't handle being checked by his sister. So that piece of shit points his weapon at her and deletes her. And somehow the family wants to tell the 14-year-old that he's not a bad person. Stop coddling that rotten piece of shit. Not only did he delete his sister, he took away the mother from his nephews. He took away the daughter from their parents and deprived the older brother of his sister. And frankly, I don't blame the 15 year old. I don't think the 15 year old should be charged. He heard a gunshot, then saw his sister laying on the floor, bleeding to death. Then saw his 14 year old brother pointing his weapon at her. His first reaction was to protect her and avenge her. And sadly, this is not an isolated incident or even rare. This is what happens every single day among Kang culture. Black women can't even feel safe among their brothers. They can't feel safe among the sons they birthed because there is something wrong with Kangs. I'm going to end this video here. 
I'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter, so bear with me. But before I go, you know I gotta shout out my new book, Kang, A Story of Survival. If you enjoy the content and the topics that I talk about here in my channel, then you will definitely enjoy this book. It's currently open for pre-order on Amazon.com. So do yourself a favor and pre-order it now. Be one of the first to read my new book in July. But if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and share. All those things help a small growing channel like mine grow faster. And if any of my commentary or any of the clips that were shown in this video triggered you or made you feel some type of way, let me know in the comment section. I really enjoy reading your comments and interacting with y'all. But most of all, know your angry biracial loves you. Stay safe and peace. It's angry biracial. Hey, say it again. It's angry biracial. Yo, what's my name?